What is good guys, back with more SPL week eight match, uh, week nine match between Cory from the Runas and Hilili from the Sharks. The score is 3-3 at the moment in the series. So uh, Medigem is definitely a huge threat. Uh, when it comes down on Heatran, Ferrothorn, it just gets a kill pretty much. Um, you just have to predict between High Jump Kick and Ice Punch. So this is going to be most likely Rock's Clef and then Spike's Ferro and... It could be Scarf Landris, yeah, yeah, I think Scarf Landris for sure. And he literally switched out turn one, the Landris. Maybe didn't want to reveal the set, I don't know. But basically, um, I assume Cory is going to go for a U turn here. I'm um, expecting a switch into either Lari or Lando here from Nihi. And yeah, looking at the sets, the. Either the Lando or the Lele has to be Scarf on his team. And probably Megalari. If it's not Megalari, the team is really weak to Heatran, so it has to be Megalari in my opinion. So I assume Yujun is coming out here. Covers the Lari and the Lando, yup. And now he can go mm, either in back into Clef or he could go in the, the Medi. Okay, goes Clef. Now, um, we'd probably see a switch in the Heatran. If this clever has knockoff, he could go for that, but I assume it's just a Command Rocks variant. So you could all the Command up. Um, you turn into either Heatran or Tapu Lele is what I'm expecting. And Heatran, does that have knockoff? Or does it just CM? And Moonblasts? Yeah, personally, would have probably CM'd there. Um, Moonblast doesn't really do anything to the Heatran. So now he goes for T-Wave? Knockoff? T-Wave. Oh, how did I know? How did I know? <laughs> Okay, because I was just surprised that he stayed in there because like if you stay in you must have T-Wave That's why I thought he would have that. Okay, now he can uh, Cory is actually kind of weak to Heatran, but now that the Heatran has paralyzed this is good for him Because now he can just so he's T-Wave rocks Moonblast softballed So he's not not calm mind, but now that the Heatran has paralyzed um, Pex can beat it easier and even Clef can softball up before it can get taunted also, um, going for Magma Storm there over Taunting, I think was a misplay. I probably would have gone for Taunt because it covers a CM and a potential T Wave, and it also covers yeah, like it's still like I guess he predicted uh, Hard Lando. He didn't want Cory to go Hard Lando or Hard Medicham, but I still would have Taunted there. I don't think uh, Cory had a good switch in, and he was yeah, I think Taunt was definitely like the safer play. But yeah, now um, he goes for Taunt and. Cory is probably gonna go into his packs, or he's just gonna fire off a Moonblast. Yeah, I would probably go packs here if I'm Cory. And he could just Magma Storm up, but that's probably not even the play. I think switching is the play. But into what? You could either go into Ferrothorn to get up a uh, Spike, or you could go into. Yeah, I think Ferrothorn is the play for Nihi. And for Cory, it's probably the packs. Because if you just Magma Storm, you don't. Like, you are paralyzed, so like, if you get paralyzed, you don't even beat the clef 1v1. Like, it doesn't work out. So, yeah, I guess Feral Zone, I simply see switch into packs. They just Moonblast, okay. Don't know if I agree with the Moonblast play, uh, but okay. So now, um, the Feral could go for a knockoff with spikes here. If Cory doesn't want to lose his leftovers, he could go hard into Medicham or he could go into the Toxic Packs. Uh, lefties on Clef are nice because he wants it healthy for the Halucha, right? Yeah, and he also has a Coco. Um, that's why he's getting up um, the spike there because if Coco gets weakened, then Halucha can win the game for sure. But yeah, um, Cory is probably gonna go for a knockoff or leech seed. Uh, Cory's default is most likely the Lando. I don't think default Coco is good at all. So it's probably. Was this Lando set revealed? I think it's Scarf, Defog, Lando, yeah. I don't remember if his Lando set was revealed, but I think both Landos are Scarf. And yeah, probably the Zemo user on Nihi's side is the Tabu Lele. And uh, the Lari has to be Mega. And the uh, Halucha is Psychic Seed, which uh, gives it a Spadef boost. So that's, that means uh, Cory can keep the Halucha in check even with Medicham's Fake Out. Like, huh. like Medicham's Fake Out will still do a lot to the Halucha, is what I'm trying to say, because it gets a Spadef boost. So I assume we see a Magma Storm here from Nihilili, but that's the para. But the thing is, since this doesn't have Calm Mind, like Moonblast does nothing to Heatran. So like this is not great for both players. Like Nihilili should probably just taunt or Earth Power because you don't want to waste your Magma Storms. 
but Cory cannot hurt the Heatran with anything. Like I would just go Pex if I'm Cory. He goes hard land though there, expecting a taunt slash earth power. And it works out, but yeah, I think Pex would have also been fine play. Now he can go for um he could go for HP Ice or Earthquake. Um I think Nihilini sh Pharozon is the safest play because it covers HP Ice, U turn and Earthquake. Because like if you go Lando, you could, you could get sniped by HP Ice. If you go Ladi, you could get um, sniped by a U turn. So I would personally go Ferrothorn, but go with Lando is predicting Earthquake or U turn. Cory just U turns, which is a fine play because even if Heatran stays in, like U turn was completely risk free because even if the Heatran stayed in, he could have just um, gone back into like Clef or Pex. But yeah, this Medicham comes out, um, but Lando is Scarf, right? I assume this Medi is not in range from Earthquake, especially if the land does not max attack. I haven't been running Kalk, so I don't know. But if Cory um, knows that he can live any one hit, then I can definitely see him going for high jump kick here, predicting a U-turn. Or Ice Punch, I guess, would also hit the Ladi, the Lele. Um, now, Ice Punch is probably the play. Yeah, yeah, Ice Punch seems fine. Because Ice Punch hits everything hard besides the Ferrothorn, and you had to beat the Ferrothorn anyway. The Ferrothorn is obviously not coming out here. I assume we see a U-turn or Earthquake. Um, U-turn into what though? Like Nihi has n has no switch into Medicham, so maybe just Earthquake and sack the Landrus is the play. Also, Cory, if he doesn't want to take damage on Medicham, I mean he already took rocks and spikes, but if he doesn't want to take more damage on Medicham, he could also go back into Landrus here, expecting the Earthquake. But I assume he's just gonna go for Ice Punch and he has Kalk that he can lift this hit. Um, he probably Kalk the U-turn damage uh, from Lando earlier. I assume it's not Max Attack because um, this team is a little bit weak to Zygarde, so it definitely needs bulk investment. And Megalady can also help check Zygarde, but it's not the best answer, so you definitely need bulk on the Lando. Which means Medi is probably able to lift the Earthquake since the Lando is most likely not Max Attack, right? Uh, but yeah, Nihili is um, one last week, and I don't remember how many games he played so far. He lost one with Mounts, he, she, I don't know exactly. I think it's an alt, but I'm not gonna get into that. Like, it might be a ghosting slot, but that's really not my deal. I'm just here to spectate a fun game. I don't care if it's a ghosting slot or not. It might be a real play, it might not be. I'm not I'm trying to talk about it. Okay, so just goes for fake out there. Um, also fine play. Like I said, I thought he would just Ice Punch um, because he called that he could live any hit. But I'm actually going to run a call myself now to... Um okay, so ba he breaks the U-turn and goes in the packs. Okay, so he didn't um, want to let the Medicham take a hit. That makes sense as well. But since he already let it take... Um, yeah. Like, I just saw that... Um he knew he could live off quick, and Ice Punch would pretty much get him a kill. But this was also a smart play, weakening the Landris because it's at 32 after rocks. Uh, I mean, Landris being low, I mean, it doesn't do that much for Cory. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of Cory's play there, actually. Um, instead of going Medicham, maybe he could have gone. Um, yeah, I guess he didn't have much of a play. I probably. Yeah. Nice play, yeah, Nice play was u just in case Cory went back into Lando, I get it now, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what Cory could have done because his answer to opposing... Like, again, he could have gone to Faro on the Lando. Yeah, he could have gone Faro and gone for knockoff or Spike. I think that would have been a good play, but Medicham and Fagot works. So this is a Psychic, but this is most likely Z-move and has... I assume it's a Z-Psychic and Hidden Power Fire. Uh, Moonblast and last move is a Taunt or Calm Mind. Mm. Cory has no good answers for Lele, that's nothing new, I mean this time he has a steel type, sometimes he doesn't run a steel type, but this is a steel type that doesn't even beat the Lele, unless it's choice Scarf, but like I said, we knew that the lander was Scarf most likely. So yeah, Lele just picks it up with a hidden power fire. Cory didn't really have a good play, he could have tried to pivot into Landris, but hidden power fire that was really risk free, because even if Landris comes out, you weaken that. And he didn't have another switch in. So now Medicham, um, I assume Cory is running Jolly, so he brings this out really confidently. And Zen Headbutt most likely kills from this range. So I assume you see a Zen Headbutt here from Cory. And because it's psychic terrain boosted and Lele has piss poor defense, so it doesn't matter that it resists. Zen Headbutt would definitely kill this. So Nihi has to pick a sack here probably. Or Hard Lari on Zen Headbutt would be a good play. Yeah, Hard Lari here. <laughs> yeah, I'd go Hard Lari here. If Cory predicts that and goes for Ice Punch, good on him. 
But I'm clicking hard, laddie, here if I'm nihi. You don't want to lose the lily just yet. If you lose the lily, does that mean anything? So stay in and lose the lily, okay? Yeah, like I said, I would have gone hard, laddie, there, but um, I guess it was too risky in case he ice punched. Huh. Like, he didn't have a safe switch, and that's what I'm trying to say. But yeah, now the Lari could come out, or the Landris. And most likely the Lari can come out here and click Psychic. That seems like the play to make. Oh, Halucha comes out, okay. So this means, um... Halucha is forced to Acrobatics here, because it obviously doesn't want to die. Cory could, um... Go hard into uh, Clefable, is what I was thinking. But he goes hard into Pex. If this is Spadef Pex, um, it might get to it killed, but it seems to be bulky. Um, did the Pex get knocked off? I don't remember. But if the Pex didn't get knocked off, then it's either Shed Shell or... Um, I assume he Haze Spams. Yeah, Haze Spams is play because Haze has more PP than Sword Stance. So if you spam Haze, you guarantee that the Halucha doesn't get an attack boost. So you just click Haze every turn. That's the correct play for Curry exactly. And now um, you spam it, you sack the Toxapex, and then you go into Clefable, and you click Moonblast. Basically, oh, he can also go to Tapu Koko. He can also go to Tapu Koko, yeah. Basically, a hazing means he got rid of the Spadef boost from Lucha, and he ensures that Lucha doesn't get an attack boost, so it cannot break through Clef or Coco. So he could go Coco here and click Volt Switch if he has that, or he could go Clef and click Moonblast. Um, so that's the Lucha, uh, that's Coco, good, my bad. Now, um, if he Lily switches us out, it loses the Unburden boost. I think that's how it works. Um, he might, he she might try to go Lando here, predicting an electric move. Or might just sack the Lucha. Uh, Pharaoh is also a play, obviously, but Volt Switch comes out, then exactly Landris would cover the Volt Switch. Yeah, just t bolts so this is uh, either Z or Specs Coco. If it's Z move Coco, then. Um, Okay, it's probably Z-move. It's U-turn, T-Bolt. Well, it could also be um, Magnet, but I don't see another Z-move user because this Landro's Scarf is what I'm thinking. So there's a Defog from Nihilili. Um, I would have ex expected uh, probably a U-turn to come out there. Because, um, I mean, yeah, the Defog makes sense. Okay, I understand the Defog because... Cory's Ferrosan is dead, which means Cory cannot get spikes back up, but Nihi's Ferrosan is still alive, so Nihi can get hazards back up. So, is this, is this locked into Defog? Oh, it's not Choice Scarf, my bad then. So, then what is the Scarf? So, this team doesn't have a Scarf, okay? Unless it's Scarf Ladi. Wow, so I assume we can see Rocks here go back up from Cory. There's the Heat Gen, and now he's probably just gonna Moonblast, try to get a special attack drop. Because he doesn't want to risk going hard into Medicham or Lando on a Magma Storm. Well, he really goes hard Lando on a potential Magma Storm. That, I don't think that was the play. Like earlier when he still had his Pex alive, he could have gone to Pex, but now he didn't have good switch anymore. So now I'm expecting um, the Ferro should come out here from Nihilili. Seems pretty risk free. And. Cory is trapped, so he can't even double predicting the Ferro Thorn. So he probably went for U turn or Earthquake. Uh, probably U turn. Of quick, okay. So there's the Landris, and this can go for Defog here. So Cory can go back into Clef and get the rocks back up. Uh, rocks are always gonna stay up. Hot Coco putting the Defog, okay. Oh, ooh, hard earthquake and Shuka Coco. Okay, it's Shuka. The reason why I thought it's Z move is because I didn't see another Z move user on his team. So I guess he just doesn't have a Z move user. Or maybe his Pex was no. If his Pex would have been Z Haze, he would have clicked that. Oh, also I know that Z Haze is really rare on Pex, but I'm just trying to find out the potential Z move. I guess he doesn't have one. Yeah, the Lando has to be Scarf. Um, but now Cory can go for a Hidden Power Ice here because if the Landris switches out, it dies to rocks, and if the Landris stays in, it's dead. So like keeping this at fodder, yeah, Nihi can keep this as fodder and go on a Pharaoh here, but HPS is pretty risk-free here because yeah, this Landris is dead if it switches out, unless the Lali has Defog as well, which would be odd to see double Defog because this team has Hazard stacking, spikes, and rocks, so I don't think it's double Defog. So there's the um, Hard Pharaoh to keep the Landris sack. Now um, Nihi can get up a spike. Um, it's usually carry roost in the last slot, so I don't think it has taunt. So Cory is probably gonna harden to his. Um, he cannot really go harden to Medicham and risk the potential power up to come out. I'm surprised he U-turned because he takes iron barbs. Hard Medis, what if he power whips? 
Yeah, I don't necessarily agree with that play. Like, I get it. I Like, I get the play, but that was risky. So now, uh, Lando got sacked off to the rocks. There, yeah, smart play. That's why um, he kept that farther. Now, the Lari or the... Yeah, the Lari has to come out here. Um, Halucha could also come out, but I think... Yeah, Halucha is not a threat without unburden. So, Lari can click uh, Psychic if it's Mega. If it's regular Lari, then it's uh, probably just going to click Psy Shock. Um, Cory could either sack his um, Coco to the Spike or he could go hard into Clef. I assume he's going to sack his Tapu Coco because um, if this is Psychic Mega Lari, I think it has a chance to it KO the Clef at 95% because it does like around half because Clef runs Max Defense in Sun and Moon. And yeah, the sack on the Lando means that many obviously can't go for Fake Out anymore because it's already in one turn. Yeah, I assume we just see the Coco sack here. Yeah. And we see now if it's Mega or Scarf Lari. It is Mega Lari with and went for Psychic, exactly. That's what I thought it would happen. So now uh, Cory can go for Moonblast here or T Wave. Um, Nihilili is probably going to switch in the Heatran or Ferrothorn. And yeah, I think this Mega Lari kind of just wins the game for Nihilili. Um, if Nihilili can get rid of the Clef. So I think this is in his favor. So there's the Heatran. And I would just taunt here if I'm Nihi Lily. And I think Cory has to try to get his Medicham in. Earlier I said it's hard to go, it's risky to go hard into Medicham. But I think at this point, okay, there the rocks go back up, yeah. The rocks go back up. That's a completely fine play. I didn't think about that. Earlier um, I said it was risky, but at this point he's in the back. So I thought he could have gone hard many there, predicting a taunt. But, or a rock, yeah. So now we see most likely U turn, Defog. Okay, Defog. Makes sense, makes sense. Um, now the Clef is gonna come out here. And I think Nihilili could um, double into Ferrothorn to get up the spikes or um, double into... Okay, never mind. Okay, never mind. I didn't say anything there. I'm surprised that uh, that he was willing to sack the Medi there, that he didn't go hard clef. I'm really surprised by that. So now Fakeout is going to come out here, obviously. But if this Alucha is not... Invested to outspeed Medicham without the unburden, then this is going to be really good for Cory, and it's not invested, so nice. Um, yeah, I don't know the the spread that Halucha's run, but I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out real quick. Halucha's oh yeah yeah Halucha's don't run much speed because they want to run bulk investment, so they can lift Moonblast from Clefable. So Psychic is always the play, and that does a good amount. There was a low roll, or Cory has a sp some speed death investment. But yeah, he has to go heat run here. Um, actually, it's a 50 50, I think. Because he could double into um, Medicham, put in the heat run. Yeah, I completely forgot that the Medicham outspeeds the Halucha because Halucha lost Unburden. For some reason, I thought Halucha would man run enough speed for that. But Halucha, you only run enough speed to outspeed. Um, so you went for T Wave or Softball? Softball. Softball is uh, overall the safest play. Mm. Psychic has 30 MP left, so he went for um, softball again. I thought he would have gone for T-Wave there, but yeah, basically Halucha, you run only speed where you outspeed stuff with your um, Unburden, stuff like Rain Sweepers, like Kingdra, um, and stuff like Gr Scarf Greninja. That's like the the ones that you have to outspeed. You don't need more speed. You get to run a lot of bulk, but yeah, I completely forgot after Unburden you don't outspeed manage him. So Dodgers and Magma Storm, they're really lucky, but um, I assume he predicted the rocks slash the full para. <laughs> um, so now this is kind of a 50-50 because if the U-turn comes out into manage him, then he just gets a kill. But, well, no, it wasn't the 50 It wasn't the 50-50 for Cory. It was... U-turn was free there because if Nilili switches into Ferrothon, then Medicham comes out, clicks high jump kick, and puts Nilili in, in a tough spot. Cory kind of turned this around, like, because the, the Halucha not outspeeding the Medi after I lost Unburden mattered a lot. Yeah. Because that meant um, the Medi got that kill, and I'm surprised that the Ferro was sacked there. I thought the Hard Lari was the play. Hard Lari, um, I think it would have taken like 40% from High Jump Kick, maybe a bit more. I, I, have, I don't know that calc because I only know like regular Lari versus Medicham calc. I don't know versus Mega Lari because Mega Lari just got common. Um, so now he has to switch out because of this Bedev drop, Sex the Landris. And now he has to go back into Clef and click Softball. And um, Hilili can just spam Psychic here to fish for Spedev drop again. 
But it is a close game. Like it can go either way. If Nilili gets enough Spadaf drop here, I think uh, Nilili just wins. This Lali obviously beats the Medicham 1v1, so if it's Spadaf drops the Clef, then the game is over. Hmm. Yeah, basically, um, the two slight mistakes that I had in this narration was, uh, what's it called? Like, not thinking about the... That it turns where I, defo where I defog. Like, it made sense for Nihilili to defog, because um, Cory's Thurzon was dead uh, earlier at the time when Nihilili defog. So Cory cannot get spikes back up. Completely made sense. But yeah, this is um, really... Ri yeah, I would have probably um, psychic again, but Nihilili makes ooh, so I would have lost there because <laughs> the Lari would have died to Moonblast crit. Um, well, to be fair, to be fair, um, yeah, that was the better play, Moonblasting. Wait, was it the better play? Yeah, yeah, because if you Moonblast, you bring the Lari in fake out range from the Medicham if Moonblast doesn't kill. Well, but if Lari can live a Moonblast and the Rock switch in... Yeah, I would have to run the Kalk, because if he didn't get that crit... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to run a Kalk after the game. But yeah, pretty much... Uh, Kari is in here, and eventually he's gonna start clicking T-Wave, because he cannot waste all his Moonblasts. So he has 18 left, so he can waste some for sure. He literally has to like keep attacking, kind of. Because he cannot, um, he she cannot let the Medicham come in. If Cory gets this Medicham in on a taunt, then he gets probably, then he's in a really good position. But yeah, Moonblasting there, just fishing for the special attack drop. Yeah, that's a taunt. Taunt forces Cory to spam Moonblast. And if Cory runs out of Moonblast, then Megaladi would win the game for Nihil Lily. So I assume we see an Earth Power or Magma Storm. Magma Storm misses. And yeah, if this runs out of Magma Storm, then there's a potential turn where Cory can go into Medicham. Because he can definitely live an Earth Power, especially with the special attack drops from Heatran. So he's getting a lot of special attack drops. He might eventually try to go into Medicham, especially when a Taunt runs out. This is for Death Drop, but... That doesn't matter at the moment. Gahedron is special attack drop. The Ladi obviously cannot come in. I'm gonna have to run a Kalk. How much Mega Ladi would take from the. Uh, from a Moonblast? That's 61 to 73, so the Mega Ladi would um, die from Moonblast. I didn't know it did that, that much, so Cory's play of Moonblasting earlier was definitely correct. Like, I know like a lot of Kalks, I have them saved in my head from standard months like Kartana. Versus Pex, Coco versus Pex, stuff like that. Coco versus Pharaoh. I know all these calcs pretty much like a computer, but I don't know the calc. He goes hard many day expecting um, the off power, and he knows he can live it because of the special attack drops. He can eat it up, and he knew that Nihilili didn't want to waste all the magma storms. And now he clicks high jump kick here. Yeah, he probably clicks high jump kick, and if Nihilili sacks the Heatran, then Nihilili loses. So I'm gonna have to run a call how much Lali takes from uh, Medicham High Jump Kick. Uh, it takes 50. Oh, it takes that much? I didn't know that. Is that minus defense naive? No, it's minus defense. It does that much. I didn't know that. So then um, High Jump Kick was always the play there. Because by High Jump Kick, he's forced to either sack the Heatran or if he goes Lali, then it's a roll to kill the Lali and you just spam High Jump Kick to keep the Lali low. I think... Well, I'm not sure about that, but now Clef just wins with Moonblast. Since, uh, like, I think if Nihilili went hard into Ladi and the uh, high jump kick got a low roll, Nihilili could have still had the chance, but it was still in Cory's favor, I think. Mm, but yeah, Cory just wins now with Moonblast here. Even a crit will not kill from the Ladi. But I was, um, since Clef spammed Moonblast, uh, this Moonblast is gonna do like 60, 72 Bob. Yeah. yeah. I think it was the, the what was the roll like 60 something to 70 something but yeah Cory takes the win for the runas the runas are up 4-3 now and yeah I thought that team preview Medicham is a huge problem and I actually didn't know that Megaladi takes that much from high jump kick Mega Medicham is stupid what the fuck 58 is I thought it would do like 40 or 50 <laughs> damn 
But Akari is now... I don't know his overall record, but I still have some games recorded that I haven't uploaded yet from him. But we can see here the Sharks are in the back now. The Sharks is the team that my man BTB is on. So I kind of want them to win, but we shall see. They still have a UU, NU, doubles, OU. I probably will record all these games in DBP. I have a lot of games recorded for um, for doubles OU, for DPP, but I haven't uploaded them because I don't know this tier, so there would be without commentary. Let me know in the comments if you want to see them. And yeah, for NU I have a lot to record as well that UB and Count would, can help me with that, but Count's computer broke, so you can't um, record at the moment for NU. And UB is just really busy and yeah, he also helps me with the OU games. But yeah, this was a cool game. Did I miss anything? Did, anything else I wanted to say? Yeah, I'm surprised that Nihili's team doesn't have a Scarfer. I'm not a big fan of that. Just how Lucha has speed control? Okay. Interesting. Like, I would have at least expected T-Wave on Ferrothorn or something if you don't have a Scarfer. Because I think the Lily changed that moves and the land also changed that moves. Maybe the Landris got knocked off. I don't want to say anything wrong. Let me look that up. Did the Landris get knocked? Try Scarf. I don't think so. Knock off. Yeah, I, if I control F, I don't see anything about Try Scarf knocked off. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. I still have, yeah, like I said, Cory games left. Cory versus. Oh, yeah, Cory versus Brofus is still um, gonna come to my channel. Nihilili versus Ricardo is gonna come. Nihilili versus Mounts and a lot more. That's just the three that I have in mind right now. Have a fantastic day. Stay tuned for more content and peace out. Smash that like button if you enjoyed as well. Pop. Peace.